Anish Santalia is our market master today. He's CIO at uh, MK Investment Managers, and he's joining us now to take some questions. Manish, good to have you with us here. Thank you very much. <clears throat> you know, maybe uh, stretching the point a little bit, but maybe not that much because the previous highs are about three, three and a half percent away. Do you think we have a clear path now uh, for a decent rally all the way into the end of the year? What's your sense? So, so there is a confluence of positive and negative factors, both emerging from the global front as well as the domestic front. I mean, right now on the domestic front, we have the state election results coming out on 3rd of December. I mean, that's one uh, hiccup that the markets need to overcome. But clearly on the uh, on the positive side, uh, you know, U.S. interest rates look like having peaked off, uh, given that inflation has pulled off very, very sharply. In spite of the Middle East tensions, you have oil at less than $80 per barrel. I mean, that's all positive. So I think given the confluence of the positive and negative factors, we would likely have a range bound market between let's say 19,000 to 20,200 uh, on the Nifty. I mean, that's uh, what looks like, uh, you know, plausible uh, in the near term. I mean, it could be uh, till about the end of the financial year or could be, uh, you know, uh, slightly lesser than that. But clearly uh, till about December, this seems to be the target. Mm, okay. Uh, Manish, hi. Good morning. Uh, so, uh, so you know, uh, what are uh, some of the big themes? I was looking at uh, the uh, you know the portfolio that you folks have, where you're looking at, I think, mid cap and small cap stocks, the you know, the emerging giants sort of uh, theme, and uh, quite a few interesting uh, facets are out there. I think digital is one thing that you're looking at. That you're looking at financialization. So, a couple of these mega themes that you're playing. Let's talk about uh, digital. Uh, Nika, by the way, on my screen is again up about a percent or two thereabouts this morning itself. Now, in digital, given that stocks are beginning to uh, you know, rally back, numbers are also looking good, what kind of themes or what kind of companies are you tracking and liking? So, in digital, I think uh, consumer tech space, uh, you have a few companies out there. I mean, uh, those look like... Uh, Having reached an inflection point where there is a non-linearity that is coming through, I think these stocks can move 2x, 3x from these levels. Uh, artificial intelligence is one big theme that is uh, set to rule the world uh, in many years out. Uh, the, the game has already started. Uh, Indian IT companies will also stand to benefit out of this. You have some small companies, uh, of course the valuations are not very palatable, but the growth seems to be coming through uh, good, uh, you know, and uh, we'll be looking at some of these companies. So, I think artificial intelligence, consumer tech, married with retailing, these are some of the names that we would be looking at in the digital space. So, so you mentioned artificial intelligence. We don't have uh, too many pure play uh, entities uh, that are like right at the forefront. So, are you suggesting that you look at some of the existing IT large cap names, the big IT boys, uh, and perhaps play AI through them? Or how would you look at it? Uh, you know, uh, before uh, artificial intelligence becomes mainstream, there would be opportunity both in the mid and small cap space. Many of these companies will get created outside the mainstream IT companies. And as like in the cloud computing space, they got integrated into mainstream IT companies only after a while. So similar is the situation which we are likely to see even in, uh, uh, in the artificial intelligence space. A lot of work is happening. And I think a few of these names in the in the portfolio, and there are a few of them in the listed space as well. Uh, uh, since we are creating the portfolio, we can't talk about individual names, but uh, you know these would be emerging companies, not uh, not the mainstream IT companies that we would be looking at currently. Okay, all right. Hi, Manish. Good morning and good to see you. And uh, you know, I recall the last time we chatted in a few months or so ago, you were talking about the pharma pack. And if I remember correctly, you were telling us that, you know, Glen, uh, Glan Pharma, that was just an example that you cited, maybe all the negatives are in the price. The stock from there is up more than 40, 50 percent. Uh, what's it's your more than 100 the, uh, 100 percent, is it? All right. I thought it was around 950 odd, uh, you know, or 1,000 rupees. It's actually 1,600. So, okay, 100 percent mm -hmm. up from there. So, it's doubled. So, what's the outlook yeah. with regard to, say, uh, Glan Pharma and various other pharma stocks? The index on the whole didn't perform for a couple of years. But now it seems it's back. Your take? So, I mean, as I had alluded, that time it is a classic case of a stocking and a de-stocking. And if you have seen this quarter numbers for all pharma, the entire pharma pack as a whole, they have shown some very good numbers. Both on the domestic pharma side as well as the uh, generic export side or even injectable export side. 
I think normalization post the COVID is happening. You have lesser price erosion competition thanks to capacity utilize uh, rationalization happening globally. I mean, and even in India. And I think uh, you know valuations as opposed to many of the sectors in the market are quite bad quite reasonable, so to speak. And these these companies are fabulous businesses for the long term. So from that point of view, I think I'm still overweight pharma even at these levels. And I think both, uh, I mean, there will be pick and choose within the pharma pack, but specifically talking about, let's say, a gland pharma or an IPCA or an Alchem. I mean, these are, away, or a few others as well, uh, you know, Mankind, etc. These would be uh, very good picks even at current levels, given the longevity of growth on the farm on these names, uh, uh, you know. And I don't think really the valuations capture entirely uh, the positives that are available on these names even now. Mm. Uh, got it. Uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, Manish, uh, any uh, thoughts on? Uh, we, by the way, uh, played out a small snippet of our conversation with uh, Mohit Barman. Uh, Burmans are the single largest shareholders in Religare. A lot of hopes, of course, uh, on uh, Religare. I think your uh, sort of uh, previous organization is one of the large shareholders in Religare. Uh, but uh, any thoughts here? You know, because the care, healthcare business. But of course, there is now this corporate battle brewing, which may, uh, which may elongate things in terms of how all of this will play out. Uh, so it's not so straightforward anymore. Any thoughts at all? I think the, uh, the equation is fairly simple uh, uh, out here. Uh, uh, the entire uh, thing is about, I mean, the entire upside in Religar is about the growth that you're going to see in care health, right? And whether it's going to be vertically demerged or whether care health goes for a listing. Now, I think uh, it's, uh, uh, I mean, the open offer is still on. And uh, I think given the growth in care health, uh, you know, uh, this whole uh, tussle about who is going to gain re re regain control of the entity, the holding company as a whole, is what will decide how far Religare can move in the medium term, so to speak. I mean, short, short term is, all we know is, uh, you know, there are news flows that are there uh, where, when the, uh, where there is a struggle to, you know, by two parties to regain control of the holding company. But uh, in the course of time, I would believe that, uh, you know, once this whole thing gets sorted out, uh, it's going to be about where there is going to be a vertical demerger of the uh, care health business, the NBFC business, and or whether it's going to be about listing. In that case, the holding company is likely to see a holding company discount. So the best uh, situation that is uh, plausible for minority shareholders would be a vertical demerger instead of a listing. Uh, of care health, you know, that is going to be the best possible situation for minority shareholders. And that would broadly be the outcome of the struggle that is there uh, now between the two parties. Uh, you know, the Burmans who want to uh, you know, have uh, control over regain uh, would have be the majority shareholders, or whether it's going to be the other side uh, where, uh, you know, it's going to be a likely listing of the, uh, of the uh, health insurance business. So, I mean, that is where the situation is currently. Mm, okay, got that. By the way, metals has become the top trade on the large cap index now. Uh, look at this. Look at Hindalco fly 4.5% up on Hindalco. Star Steel, Raised W Steel, all of those stocks are uh, stacked up over there. One of the best performing sectors of the market this morning. Uh, Manish, energy transition. Again, I'm going back to that one pager on your, uh, on your portfolio and, you know, some of the themes that you're tracking. Again, not too many direct listed plays here in India, but you know, this is one company really spearheading energy transition. Though a lot of conglomerates are doing it overall. I mean, we talk to Tata Power, they tell us that renewables, renewables is their key focus, even though there's a lot of chatter on thermal power capacity right now. So how would you play this energy transition theme? So, uh, Surabhi, I mean, uh, energy transition and uh, moving away from fossil fuel to green energy is a fact now. I mean, it's no longer uh, you know, if and but. Uh, given that we want to reduce our dependence uh, geopolitically on fossil fuels, uh, that is one aspect which is in favor. There's technology advantage which is in favor, or uh, the cost advantage which is in favor. So all of these things would mean that right from production, generation, transmission, distribution, till consumption, the entire value chain will see very large growth between now and 2030. And uh, there are a lot of plays, 
in the energy transmission space. And I'm alluding to the fact it's not just the production companies. When we are talking about wind generating, com- uh, wind power generating companies or solar power generating companies, but somebody who is going to be making the module, somebody who's going to make the glass, somebody who's going to let's say make the cables, the conductors, and let's say there are companies involved in uh, electric charging stations. We are also looking at battery electric storage. So this entire space is buzzing with activity, and there will be many companies which are very small currently, which will become giants in the next seven to ten. And that is why we're targeting this space. It's no longer if and but whether energy transition is on us, but it is on us. I mean, and uh, there are a lot of plays. You're already seeing some of the numbers that are coming through. The outlook, the visibility on earnings uh, seem to be quite good. So, I mean, I would believe that this is one of the space which will do quite well. Okay, all right. Manish, always good hearing your thoughts. Thanks so much for joining in and filling us in with your take. Wishing you a good day ahead.